Just as you are about to leave, Oreo comes to see you off. It looks like he has something to say. According to him, the dragon flew to the west, where there is an island called Mount Medica. Rumor has it they are actively researching medicine on this island. He thinks he can use their knowledge in his work. Understanding his father's wishes, Bruno nods, Say no more. Mount Medica. Something stirs deep inside your chest, but you blame your imagination and board the boat without another thought. Wasn't that so much fun? Riddus can hardly contain her excitement as she seeks a similar reaction from Melanie. Sure, Melanie croaks, her face a sickly shade of green. The custom supplement has worn off completely. Riddus turns to you and carries on, oblivious. Wasn't that just the greatest? You, however, are a bit worn out, as your mid-voyage teasing of Melanie prompted her to ring you like a rag. Your first order of business should be a sweep of the island to ascertain the dragon's whereabouts. Tread carefully, as danger lies in the unknown. A road stretches west from the docks, suggesting the presence of a house or settlement at the other end. take the lead, taking in the island scenery. It all looks unsettlingly familiar to you. A white hot streak of pain shoots through your head, feeling as though your skull will split in two. You grab your head as if holding it together and drop to your knees. The searing pain erases any hope of recalling the memory that felt primed to return to you. Beads of sweat are pouring off you now as you struggle to keep your head in one piece. Drink this, Bruno insists, offering you a bottle of headache curative. You greedily drink it down, desperate for relief. The pain begins to ebb and you hurriedly resolve to press on. With a whoosh of displaced air, something shoots across the path right in front of you. What is that thing? Glancing in the direction it went, you see some sort of bottle on the ground. You head over for a closer look. 
It's a bottle of medicine, just like you thought. It'd be a waste to just leave it there. So you pick it up and put it in your pack. After a time, you happen upon a village. This place, you mutter unconsciously. Perhaps he is as anxious as you are about this place. You two okay? Melanie asks. You open your mouth to reply. Only to notice the ambush a moment too late. Repel the monster attack. You are accosted by a man the instant you set foot in the village. Medicine, please, he begs. His eyes are glazed over, and his general demeanor unsettling. Should he really have medicine? You give him a glimpse of the medicine. Nothing in this life is free, you sneer. Your callousness is swiftly punished as the medicine slips from your grasp and clatters to the ground. The man runs off to who knows where, making noises that can only be described as inhuman. You and the party resolve to continue exploring the village, despite the unsettling encounter that just occurred. Something is askew in this village. It would be best to proceed with caution until you can determine what is happening. The man glares at you, clutching tight to countless medicine bottles in his hands. He insists that they all belong to him and refuses to share them with anyone.
Another villager approaches you. Though his speech is slurred, the demand remains the same. Medicine. This villager is also behaving strangely. Will you acquiesce to his request? You remove the medicine from your pack, recall for a moment how much it cost, and begin sliding it back into place. In the blink of an eye, the villager snatches up the medicine bottle and darts out of view. Something's not right in this village, Bruno mutters, clearly worried. You hear a panicked cry up the road. Stay with me. Focus on me. That can't be good. The old man sighs saying he lost both his son and grandson to the medicine. Not wanting to be the only one left behind, he lifts the bottle in his hand to his lips and gulps it down. the villager about the dragon. The headman can help you if you're in some trouble, she retorts, doubling over to empty the contents of her stomach onto the street. Dozens of empty medicine bottles litter the ground in front of this woman. This cursed island is separated from the rest of the world, she mutters from the ground. I heard that outsiders call this place Mount Medica, she remarks, then throws the empty bottle in her hand to the roadside. You hail the villager, only to receive a blunt, go bother the village headman with your chatter in return. The villager turns to face the wall once more and smacks his head against it repeatedly. His forehead is soon covered in blood. You arrive on the scene to find a man collapsed in the street, convulsing. Another man kneels over him in an apparent attempt to provide comfort and care. The noble man wears impressive white armor befitting a knight. He continues talking to the fallen man as he provides emergency care. Seeing the knight's devotion makes you feel a bit like a putz for doing nothing. some of his custom supplement. He furrows his brow and solemnly shakes his head. 
The villager is now clawing at his own face with his fingernails, crying out for medicine. Blood, as black as tar, begins oozing out of his eyes, ears, and mouth. It proceeds to leak from every orifice imaginable. The convulsions subside. Within moments, the villager lies still. A horrific thought makes itself known. This is the first time you have witnessed the death of a fellow man. Even in a world where medicines and elixirs can cure most any ailment, none are safe from death's icy grip. And as well you know, that which is dead can never return. Your mind goes blank. You drop to your knees in shock. Melanie clamps her hand to her mouth, stifling a scream. Riddus shakes uncontrollably. The knight hangs his head. Bruno nervously asks, What are you doing here? The knight's name is Sherwin. He identifies himself as a member of the Ivory Order. His travels brought him to this village where he has been caring for the ailing residents. His face contorts in disgust. If not for these foul drugs, they would be healed. He spits and takes his leave. Bruno gazes upon the villager's corpse with a look of apparent realization. You had best get out of here quick, she cautions you. If you stay here, then you too will, she begins, then suddenly starts cackling. A man approaches you as you wander through the village. Spare a bit of medicine, he asks genially. He sets about convincing you that your kindness will be returned tenfold if you just give him a little from your pack. His silver tongue would put even the best salesman to shame. You reach for a bottle of medicine completely taken in by his pitch. Bruno stills your hand. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why do you want it so badly, you ask, affording him another opening. He gladly takes it. He first came in contact with it as a child. His parents made him no money. Ever since forgot its wonderful taste. You are fully invested in this story and desperate to give the man some small comfort in this cruel, cruel world. You're primed and ready to hand it over. I've heard better sob stories, Melanie says dryly, having somehow absorbed the man's story despite the blistering speed in which he delivered it. Bruno thinks you'd better not, but you're not so sure. You heed Bruno's warning and return the medicine to your pack. The man's shoulders droop and he shuffles off out of sight. He appears to have dropped something peculiar in his haste. Is every day like this, you inquire? According to the knight, an elderly man living just outside the village is typically the one who looks after its residents. You'd be best served asking him all your questions, Sherwin says as he returns to his patient. <laughs> 